Hey everyone and welcome to another Thursday. I can't believe how quickly time is flying on my end of things. I hope you guys are having uh, some decent weeks too and that things are going well for you uh, despite everything that is going on right now. Um, I know a lot of cities and states are kind of up and down with what's going on. Um, countries too if you're joining me from another country. But I'm glad that you are here and we get to spend some time crafting today. So sorry about the delay there. I was working on some settings for my stream and I realized that I could stream at maybe a higher um, resolution. So I tried that and then it had a, some kind of error that I had to fix. But here I am. So technical blah, blah, blah. Um, things are looking good. And I'm seeing myself on... Here. and if you are out there please say hello I know I didn't send out any reminders I need to get better about doing that so we'll see who's here today um, I will be happy to have anyone join that decides to join so I've um, got a best of Friday card to preview for you today I won't tell you what the whole challenge is about and what the whole list is but I will show you the card that I made and we will go through it together and hi Paula and we're going to work on some ideas using the um, spheres and I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, it's a new stamp set from Altenew. And someone asked if I could give them some suggestions for what they could do with it. And maybe it was you, Paula. I don't know. Um, so we're going to be using that one today, too. So um, that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't have anything like prepped ahead of time for that one. Um, we're just going to try some ideas that I have in my head so you can see me kind of work on the fly and we'll see how that goes. So anyway, and we've got Ms. Tamp here. Excellent. I'm so glad you guys joined. Like I said before, I didn't send out any reminders. So I was hoping that people would remember. Um, and if you're subscribed, of course, you're getting the reminder when I set up the... Um, when I set up the video. So hopefully you saw that. And now that I'm over a thousand subscribers, yay, I can have a community. So I'll be putting out little reminders in the community, which is kind of like a, like a, like a Facebook kind of thing or a, a Twitter kind of thing where I can send out like little posts and pictures and um, polls and things like that. So I think I'm going to be using that a little bit more often than trying to do things over on Facebook and then coming over here and doing things. It's just a lot easier to do it all in one place. So I'm glad that I have that available to me now um, because I have more than a thousand subscribers. So yay, I'm fluctuating between a thousand fourteen and a thousand fifteen today. So it just keeps growing. For a while it was um, it was like a thousand, a thousand one, 999, 1,000, and it just kept going back and forth. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm like, no, come on. I need to get over the hump a little bit. So now I'm glad to I'm glad to be there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you guys for, um, for subscribing because I really do appreciate it. Okay, so let's start working on some fun projects. And we'll see how today progresses. All right. So today is kind of like a crazy busy day. I have, um, and I need to adjust my chair here. It's a new chair that I'm using and it's, um, I like it because it's kind of a, like a leaning chair. So I don't actually really sit on it. I just lean and I like it, but it's taking just a little bit of getting used to. I have one similar to it upstairs, but it's not exactly the same. And working on it is a little different but I prefer it over the other chair that I was using because it squeaked and it was never quite the right height and whatever so this seems to be working but it's just kind of funky anyway okay so this is the card we're gonna start with I love this card um, for the longest time I had it with just the diamonds in the background and the high and I wasn't really sure what I was going to use it for. I thought I was going to use it for another project. And then I ended up not because it didn't go with anything else that I had created for that little series. So I set it aside. And then when I looked at my festive Friday list, I had some of the criteria. Well, actually just one of the criteria on there. But I knew I could add other pieces to it that would make it work. So this card totally 100% qualifies for Festive Friday. And um, that goes live tomorrow. So this is like a sneak peek of the project. And I won't tell you what the elements are that I used. You'll figure that out when you see the post tomorrow. So I've got that tomorrow. 
Plus, Ulta New has a new product release tomorrow. It's their monthly large release with new stamps and dyes and stamp masks and stuff like that and some stencils. So that comes out tomorrow. And then I'm also participating in a blog hop called hashtag spread joy, not germs. And it is being put on by Catherine Pulo Designs and Hedgehog Hollow. And there will be, I kid you not, 145 stops to the blog hop. 145. It's crazy. Um, and this like just came up two weeks ago, not even. So like a lot of people said, yeah, I'll do it. And then they signed up and they've got everything in for it and whatever. So there's going to be um, 50 prizes and it's just based on leaving comments wherever you feel like leaving comments. So I encourage you to get along with that hop tomorrow and through the rest, I think it's up until maybe the 27th that you can leave comments. So I think you've got like a week, which is great. Uh, or no, maybe only until the, until the 23rd and then they'll be announcing the winners on the 27th. So that one is awesome. So between that and Alta New Release Always Has Giveaways, definitely stop by on both of those and leave some comments in places to get some, maybe get some free stuff, right? So the um, the hop, the Spread Joy Not Germs hop is um, the minimum prize is $25 gift certificate to wherever. So, and there's a lot of really great prizes with that one. So pretty awesome. Okay. So anyway, three things going on tomorrow is super crazy. So this is one of them and uh, I'm going to show you how I made it. So this is like a watercolor deal and I have a couple things like I already cut out. So I have my balloons done up. So those, and then I've got a little sentiment strip to go here and we'll use the Alta new sentiment strip stamp set for that. So I'm just going to kind of set both of these. Oh my gosh, they're stuck aside. And I'm going to use this watercolor pan set. This is the new all to new um, watercolor essentials pan set. And I don't know why I did do that for a reason. Okay. Um, and I'm feeling okay about it. So let me tell you, and I mentioned this if you watched the all to new live the other day. So this green and this yellow and this this blue, um, they don't, they're not very vibrant. They're actually like, they stay harder even after I get them wet. Like the rest of these will get creamy and work really well, but these for some reason do not. So I took a pin and I scraped some lines in here so you can see those um, to try to get, if there was like any kind of coating or anything on top of here to get that to break up a little bit so that I could get to the better watercolor underneath and it helped these are not my favorites because i like the round pan idea and that they come out but they come out so and now that i have water and i won't demonstrate it to you but they come out so easily that like if i flip this whole thing over they just fall right out so it was kind of a design fail i did put some little magnets in the bottom which help a little bit but i need to get better magnets to really get them to stick in place. See, look at this one is still like, as if it was still wet, that's crazy. I used these two days ago, they should be completely dry. But see, this one is like hard as a rock. So, but we're gonna use that one. So I need to get some water in there. Crazy. All right, so how are you guys doing today? Is everything cool in your neck of the woods, I hope? Like, Nothing crazy going on with your families or you or anything. I'll tell you one crazy thing that happened here today. So my husband and I, we cook. We cook a lot. And since we both, we work for each other and we work from home. Um, and we've gotten into this kick where we do lunches a couple of times a week. We do this um, meal planning service. And so we get the, everything that we need to make meals which is nice and it just does um, enough for two servings so it's perfect for just me and my husband well we were cooking today and one of the things was in the oven it was in a pan that I had cooked on the stove it was chicken and um, so then you put it in the oven to finish cooking with some of the sauce so took it out of the oven <laughs> and when my <laughs> my husband's on and <laughs> he's hearing this story now. So um, 
it was in the oven and my husband took it out with a pot holder and I was working on something else and I turned on the stove underneath it because it had to reduce down the sauce and he um, wanted to move it on to the back burner and he grabbed the handle. So my husband um, probably is going to have some really nice burns on his hand. He's okay. Like we didn't need to go to the hospital or anything. So um, I think he'll be fine, but he's going to have some... Um, some blisters for sure in some places because he grabbed it pretty good. He just went whoosh, and then he said, oh, that's hot. And he <laughs> let go. Fortunately, none of the sauce came out either. So yay. So my husband says it's snowy here. And yes, it is. It's um, what we have like about an inch of snow outside. We're not supposed to have an inch of snow this time of year, but here it is. And it's a beautiful, warm, sunny day in Lincoln, United Kingdom. So that's pretty cool. That's a rarity to have a sunny day for you in the UK. Okay, so you kind of saw what I was doing. So this is um, watercolor cardstock and I'm just using the width of this ruler to make some diagonal lines in one direction. See how well that worked out. And then I'm gonna come back and do the diagonal lines coming back the other way. And if I get smart about it, like I could do it this way and make sure that they're like more diamondy, but I ended up kind of making them look a little bit more um, more squat instead of like perfect diamonds. See how those end up looking. All right, so I'm doing this at a higher resolution today. So hopefully I don't like break up We'll see how the video works today. This is a test, <laughs> an experiment. We'll see how it works. It says I have a really good connection, so everything seems to be okay so far. Oh, my husband says he'll survive. Well, I hope so because typing with one hand is not gonna be any fun if you can't type with it. All right, so see now I have, now I have diamonds. That wasn't too hard to do. Yeah. All right. So I have three colors. Well, actually four colors that I'll be working with. I'll be working with these two greens. So this is um, emerald and forest glades. So emerald and forest glades. And then I'll be throwing in some black, but I'm going to be mixing these two as well. So it's kind of fun. And I just, I need to pick a pattern. And I'm doing um, wet on dry, so I'm not pre-wetting these diamonds at all. All right, so while I'm watercoloring here, like if you guys have any questions or you want some crafty chat, tell me anything that you've seen this week from any companies you like that you're really eyeing up or if you pulled out an old stamp set that you haven't used in a long time that you're excited about using again. If you did any projects. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip. I'm going to do, um, because I'm going to have three shades of green, I'm going to skip two and then do another one down here. So it's easier to work through these colors one at a time. So that way you end up skipping spaces and it gives it just a minute to dry and then you don't have to worry about when you um, when you're doing your next color like they won't bleed into each other. That's what I was thinking. All right. A bit of glare that wasn't there before. Um, yeah, I set up my lights a little different. I had a light coming in from the side and I didn't like it because when I did my photography, I was getting glare here. And then I had a light up top. So you can see it here, yes. 
um, that I was only using for my photography, but I kind of feel like I'm getting better light down here, but is it too much? Is it too bright? So let me know. I don't know that I'll be able to mess with it today because that would require me to like get out of this, out of the feed and everything. So that it won't happen today, but I'll work on it if you think it's too bright. So I don't know. Or you're catching a glare maybe from the metal here. That's possible too, because the light is like right over this. But I think it's more bright. I don't know. I'll have to watch the replay. Okay, so you also said you've been watercoloring a lot. Oh, you don't have ink other than black and green. That's kind of cool. I don't know, I kind of go in fits and spurts, like I'm doing a lot of watercoloring right now, but at some point I'll probably switch and start doing more marker work, I don't know. So I'm also skipping every other row because this is going to be the gray row. So that's it for that. And then this one will go up here. If I wanted to like come back with a, um, Oh, yeah, it hits on my face. Yeah, it's this one up here. If I turn here, I'll turn it off and you can see what it looks like. See, it comes up that way. It's not on my face anymore. But you see how dark it is down here? I don't like that. But yeah, if I, oh, yeah, if I put my face into it, it definitely hits. Yeah. Okay. So let's see that one and that. I think that's all I need for this color. Okay. Well, I'll come back to it because I'm going to do some mixing. Okay, so we'll go into the forest glades. Um, and I guess, you know what, maybe I'll do this one backwards because the way I was looking at it, I was going to go down this way. But see on this one, I went up the opposite way. It doesn't matter, but I'll do this one opposite since I was thinking of it that way. So now that I've done these other ones, like I started with this one, it's pretty dry. What about you, Paula? How's things out in the UK? I know you said it was sunny, which is super nice. You guys don't get enough of those kinds of days, so enjoy it for sure. Any projects you've been working on lately or? So two down. I was doing a class on Tuesday. It was one of those new Alta New classes with the um, creativity kits. They're doing them on Zoom, but there's only like 10 people per class and it went really well. And I was asking someone if I was you know, how they were doing with their project as they were working on it. And they're like, oh, you make it look so easy. I'm like, well, it's always easy when you have the project created and you're just making it for the second time, <laughs> right? But it was really fun because I could hear people on the other end and see them. It wasn't just like 
it wasn't like this where I don't see you guys and I have to wait for you to put in a comment. Um, we could talk back and forth. We could see each other. It was really, I need to get a rag. Okay, so that is it for the green ones. So what I need to do is some mixing. So I'm gonna mix the emerald. And that's way up there, there we go. And I'm gonna mix the forest glades. And I love the color that this creates. It's really, really pretty. And actually, sometimes I get impatient, so I just move it over here and I just drip some in. <laughs> but it makes a beautiful Kelly green color. I did this. Um, for another project recently. I'm trying to think what project it was. It might have been my Alta New stuff on Monday. I don't remember, because I did watercoloring there too. This was actually originally for that, but it didn't really match the rest of the color scheme, so I set it aside. And besides, this would have taken too long to demonstrate in a one hour thing. So I thought I could do it here where I have unlimited time. Hi, Debbie. Welcome. I'm just doing some watercoloring if you didn't notice. So, and it's not an Easter card either. <laughs> There. Oh, wait, not quite. Um, oh, that is the right color. Now I can say that. So that is the first part and then the second part is to go into black and actually i really do like the black in this one it's nice and creamy and dark and i can um get a lot of different shades out of it, which is super nice. Okay, so let's see what this shade ends up being. And we'll see if I need to go lighter or darker with it. Because this is all just kind of a guess. It was like a drop of water over here. Okay. Um, so this is in line with the green one here. And I 
think that's it. Two, three, one, two, three. And that'll be different. Okay, cool. So let's go for super dark. I'm actually going to end up cutting this down, but I think, I don't think I have this cut down yet. We'll find out later. Um, okay, so now. I think this is like my first real foray into drawing something and then coloring it in with watercolors. Usually I would just use a stamp or something. But this just kind of came to me and I'm really happy with it. I would like to be a better like artist artist, not a stamp artist, but I don't know if I have time for that. <laughs> So, Debbie, how's the weather in in your neck of the woods? Um, we know that it's snowy here in Nebraska and that it is nice and beautiful in Lincoln, UK. How is it out by you? Okay, super light, super light, super light. So I'm almost done. I just need to water down this one here a little. Well, let's see. Yeah, just a little. Rainy at around 60. It's been in the 80s all week. Oh, you're in Orlando. Nice. Yeah, my husband is hoping to do some yard work over the weekend, like this coming weekend, because we had moles that decided to tear up our yard over the winter. So he was going to um, roll the yard and then cut the grass, because the grass needs to be cut. But now that we have the snow, It'll be interesting to see how long it sticks around. It's supposed to get warmer here though. And look, just like that, I have a beautiful painted background. Gorgeous. Now I had that like there was a little spot of water here and it um, kind of decided that it wanted to bleed into the other one so I'm going to see if I can fix it. That probably 
probably will work. Oh no, armadillo. Oh my goodness. So we um we lived in West Texas for a few years. It was the longest 3 years ever. Um we didn't have I mean I saw armadillo, but um we didn't really have a big problem with them. We had problems with we had a lot of snakes though. Yeah. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna let that sit aside for a minute and I'm gonna grab these balloons. Now these balloons are just, I just used regular um, white cardstock. They're not watercolor. So I'm gonna take that lightest color that I did, maybe even water it down some more and just do a simple little shadow, I guess, on it. There. See. Yeah, just like anything, definitely practice. This is a good exercise. So like if you just um, use your pencil and a ruler and you just mark out some lines and you kind of practice coloring them in, that's a good exercise to do. And of course, just, you know, stamping things out and practicing with no expectation necessarily of using them, um, except for just some practice. So that's why I've been thinking of starting a practice journal, just for that reason, so that I'm not thinking about doing a card. I'm just like, okay, I'm stamping this five times and I'm gonna color it the same way five times or the same, uh, the different, a different way five different times, um, just to get some practice on it. So I'm gonna clean this off and empty this out. I might do some more watercolor later. So I'll set these up here in case we need them later. And this, how dry are you? Almost dry. So let's stamp our sentiment. Um, so I did a feel better because, you know, I don't have a lot of get well cards. So I'll do this one the same. Oh, you know, I should mention too. So this one looks darker and that's because it is. So the first time I laid the color down, it was too light. So I... Uh, went over it again and made those darker. This one is just one layer of the color, so you can see what that looks like as a lighter shade. I like them both. I think they both look really great. Okay. Oh, I didn't grab a black ink. Okay, sometimes sentiment strips really drive me crazy. There we go. I think I got it. So now that this is mostly dry, I can cut out my die cut. I love these. I talked about this on Monday in the Alta New Live on Facebook, and I love this bold greetings. 
They are awesome. They look really great with um, florals. They look great with they look great with everything. Okay, so I'm gonna put it about there. And I need to run this through the big die cut machine because it's too wide. And then I'll chop this down to the right size. So I'm going to save my little pieces here. Maybe we'll use them later. And I don't know if these pieces maybe would be cool to use for something else too, now that I've cut those off. Who knows? I don't save everything. So that's just going right on. Oh, hello, Prairie. Nice to see you. Are you able to um, work from home or do you still go into an office somewhere? I don't know where you live either, so who knows? Um, boy, I got a couple to catch up on. Um, so Debbie, um, my husband loves to mow the lawn. I will not deny him that love. <laughs> he can have it. Um, and we don't really have a snake issue here per se. I mean, yeah, there are poisonous snakes in Nebraska, but don't really come up to the house. We have um, garter snakes and a lot of black rat snakes, which is fine because they eat the mice. So we have had a couple in our garage before, but not too often. Now that we've gotten rid of a lot of like the overgrowth from the previous owners, we don't have as much of a problem with that. Ugh, I still don't think I'd want to find a snake nest. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, hi, Becca. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, so you're close because we're in um, Omaha. And my husband is originally from Iowa up in Mason City, so we know the area well. All right, so pop on the sentiment. I'm gonna do that same trick that I did last time because this watercolor paper is kind of thick. So I'm gonna trim this off and I'm going to use the extra to make it um, give it another layer in between here and of course it's just the right size yeah we are practically neighbors <laughs>
apparently glue and I are having a thing today because that oozed out all over the place too. I'm surprised. There. That was better. And so now I just need to add in the balloons. Oh good, I'm glad that worked out for you. Um, the, the little extra paper tuck. It is a little handy trick. Did I not? I guess I thought I pulled out a pen, but I didn't. All right, so this is a 0 0.01 journaling pen and it's working today, good. And it gives me a nice thin line to make some balloon strings. And pop this one up. I'm trying to use up these little foams that I found because I don't particularly like these because they're a pain and there's a lot of waste. I mean, I'll use the waste for sure, but I prefer the square ones in most instances. The one good thing is that the little backings do come off pretty easy. There. And then I can make another little. Ta da! All right, so that's your sneak peek. Let's see. Oh, is the Chad still in the sentiment? Um, oh, I guess I did put it in this one. I didn't think about it, it's sitting right here. I love that you call it a Chad. <laughs> That's awesome. It's an efficient thing to call them. I mean, otherwise, what do you say? The, in, the letter in, insides? <laughs> There, now it's really done. Yeah. So um, this is still bothering me. That's just me. Yeah, I don't think there is another word. It's just the centers, the letter centers, letter, I don't know. <laughs> there, that makes me happier, that line there. Yay! Oh, you know what I did on this one that I didn't do on this one is I put some splatter on it. So... You could leave it with or without. I think it, they both look good. I like it with just a little bit of the white spatter though. Um, but I'll leave this one without. Yay, awesome. So you guys will see this one tomorrow on the blog. This is for Festive Friday. And yeah, let's do a reset. So any crafty questions? Any products that you've gotten recently that you don't know how to use or something that you got that you just figured out how to use or something you're excited to try that you've seen? I think I asked this before if there was anything that 
um, has come out recently by any companies that you like, that you're excited about. I see all the Alta new stuff in, a, in advance, so um, I know there's a lot of really cool things coming out tomorrow. <laughs> Um, here, I'll give you a sneak peek of one of them. Here, this is it. So this is a sneak peek for tomorrow's alternate release. Super, super awesome. I was working um, with my dye machine sandwiches. I have a new um, Gemini Junior, which I really like. Um, and okay, so one thing that I got that I was excited about is there's a new company, new since January, a company called iCrafter. See, iCrafter. And she's got lots of really cool products, and some of them are just starting to come out. So this is a, let me show you here. This is a self-healing mat for your die cutting machine. And it's designed to go with her iCrafter machine, but you can, if you make the right sandwiches, you can use it with other die cutting machines. Um, she says manual, but I wanted to try it with my Gemini Junior because there's like all these different layers to a Gemini Junior. And I was like, there's gotta be an easier way. And then, you know, I didn't wanna have to always be buying plates and stuff. So um, it turns out that I do have a sandwich. So this is the Gemini Junior plate plus the iCrafter plate. And I found I had some Sizzix plates and they're slightly thinner than the, I, than the Gemini Junior plate. And this sandwich works great for most things. And then if I need a little bit of an extra shim in there, I can add in the metal plate from my Gemini Junior and it works great. So this is something new, but see, look at it no cuts no mars no nothing on my plates because it's all being absorbed into the um into the self-healing mat yay so that's one thing i'm excited about and these are available now on icrafter.com i'm not an affiliate there and i don't get any kickbacks or anything so check her out because she's really awesome yeah oh okay so debbie and this is only this plate is only 14 $14 and I think it's going to last a long time. So even though I have like um, some paper in there, I, when I was doing some other cutting, I just ran it underwater and a little scrubby pad and it came right out. So I'm really, really happy with it so far. I'm going to do some more testing before I do a review on it, just to make sure that it's not like ruining in any of my dyes or anything, but I'm really happy with it. So yeah, smooth and shiny. Um, I hope they stay that way. Cool. Okay, so somebody was talking about a bottle of Nouveau liquid stuff that people use. Oh, the, um, oh no. The Nouveau liquid um, is like the pearls. I don't have any of those, but I bet you didn't have to cut the top off, did you? <laughs> um, what could you do? Oh, um, hmm. If it's a problem at this point, maybe you could put it in a different bottle. So, um, can can this mat be cut down? I'm sure it could be. It's basically sized for a regular um, six, six inch. So it's like a six by nine. This is a regular cutting plate and it fits right on top of it. It's perfect. So um, it's for a regular size, regular, regular sized die cutting machine, but it works great in my Gemini Junior. It will work great in a, in like your Sizzix Big Shot. I'm sure there's sandwiches you can make up with your um, <sighs> Spellbinders, your um, Fun Stampers Journey, any of the machines. So, okay, so Debbie, you have a bunch of the Nouveau Drops. Miss Tamp took her Nouveau drops and cut the top off. So any suggestions on how she might be able to continue using the drops? Is it a problem? I guess I should ask Miss Tamp. 
So hopefully it's not a problem. But if it is a problem, maybe Debbie has some tips for you because I've never used them. I have, I will show you what I have. Okay. These are two bottles, two bottles of stickles basically um, from Stampin' Up from, I can't tell you how many years ago. Um, these are um, super old. <laughs> I didn't use them for much, but what I did discover is that if I put them on and then I used a brush, I got a really cool glitter paper. So if you want to see that, I'll show it to you because it looks it actually looks really great on navy blue. Anyway, okay, so we were going to do some stuff with the spheres and spirals because <sighs> it was requested. So, and I don't, where did she go? Paula, I hope you're still out there. I know it's getting to be a little later in the day for you. So if you're not out there, of course you can watch the replay and we'll have some great ideas for you. Um, so spheres and spirals. And sadly, I discovered, and I need to um, get what else I knew about this. I discovered that my, one of my stamps, this one here, has a gouge in it. So it doesn't stamp right. It goes, actually, I'm hiding it underneath the T on this card. Um, so we'll work around it today. You'll get the gist, I'm sure. So spheres and spirals, and then there are dies. The funky thing about the dies is that they're solid. So like this one coordinates with this one. Oh, okay, good. And you know, it fits in here perfectly, but the problem is is like lining it up. If you, if you stamp and want to put the die on top of it, that's tough to do. So I'm finding that it's better to die cut and then like put it in your stamp positioner and um, stamp it. So let me show you how I do that. And we'll do, um, we can do this one. So something like that. Well, we can do both of them. So, and they will get out of round if you're not careful. And they're also huge. So I don't even know if I really have a block big enough. Yeah, I do. Well, no, I don't. See, look, it falls off the end of this block. So that could be a problem. We'll try it without and see how that goes. Or on the block and see how it works out. I just pulled up a whole bunch of different paper and stuff for us to mess around with. Because I had a couple ideas. So I mentioned at the beginning and I might not have, you might not have caught it. But I, um, I purposefully didn't prep anything because I wanted to explore it with you instead of like doing it for you and then saying this is what you can do. We'll explore together. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm glad you ladies are talking about it because I don't know how the stickle or how the Nouveau drops come. Like if there is a protective um, piece on there that you have to do um, first to get to the good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna cut out a whole bunch of these.
So we're working on our Nouveau Drops problem, whatever that might be. Okay, so I pulled out some aqua colored cardstock. This is um, from Hero Arts. It's almost like the same color. So I was really kind of hoping that these dyes would be separate so you would be able to just cut out the outside without the inside and then if you wanted the inside you would add the circle and then you would be able to see the whole thing but that was not the case which made me kind of sad you end up with some kind of cool looking ones though So now I've got some cut out here and I don't need that anymore. Okay, so I just want to reiterate how awesome this is. So see, look, it's like totally still crystal clear. There's no marring on that whatsoever. And it all just went into here and there's really not hardly any cuts on here either, but they cut out perfect. So I am digging that for sure. All right. Okay. The crystal drops. It had a clear gem lid. Oh, yeah. Does the top screw off so that way you could just peel off the whole barrier? Maybe that's all it needs. Okay. So, for stamping on these, okay, so I got some colored ones going on, which actually I'm gonna do, let's do these in black. Let's. And I don't know if I can eyeball it, but we'll try. And then we'll know if that's maybe something that you want to do it this way or if you want to use your um, stamp positioner. Okay. So you really have to get over the top of it. And these little points do not go very far out. Where's my... Oh, here it is. Okay, so let me show you. So the points go to here, but the actual die goes all the way out to here. So there is... There's a big difference here. Let me flip it. Let me flip myself, and then you can see... how that works so you see how the stamp doesn't really go all the way to the edge that's important okay so when you're stamping it then you know that you're not trying to get it all the way out to the edge So I can do it this way. Um, you might, I mean, obviously you could line it up really easy using a stamp positioner. So again, the other problem is, is I do have some overhang here. So my stamp isn't sitting all the way on my block because it's so huge, but I can make it, I can make it happen. All right, so I love the idea of 
um, coloring this or um, stamping it on colored paper with black or with um, like another color. So a navy blue on here with this would be really awesome. Um, here, okay, you guys want some more close up, close up. So let me flip back so you can see this one even better. All right, so you can see how I have that with the star background. All right, and then there's that, and then here's the That looks pretty awesome. Cool. All right. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let me grab. I didn't grab anything like card base like. So I'm thinking, I like that. So this is kind of crazy, but so my husband and I, our business logo uses a gear and this is the kind of color that it is, <laughs> which is really awesome. So yes, it reminds me of, it also reminds me of, so it reminds me of my company logo. It also reminds me of the Spirograph for sure. And um, yeah, I just really, I love it. And to answer your question, it is gold embossed. So this one here, that's gold embossing on here. Yummy. So I really wanted to put like the thanks up here, but it was getting lost in all the gold. So I put it at the bottom. It's kind of fun. Anyway, okay. So that, so I like what I really want to do is grab a piece of orange cardstock and make it look like my company logo, but I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, actually here, I could do this. Um, let's see. Let's do that. Cause that would be a nice masculine one to do. What do I have? So we'll use this one, which is the one that unfortunately is kind of messed up. You'll get to see that, but we'll put it in a place so that it gets hidden. I'll grab a different. Uh, and we're going to do this in orange. So Autumn Blaze, and this one I'm going to try to freehand as well. We'll see how this one goes. Um, actually, maybe I won't, because if I need to stamp this again, there's no way I'm getting that realigned, right? Haha. <laughs> I'm brave on some things, but not everything. So that would be the other reason you'd want to use a stamp positioner is that you want to be able to um, stamp it again if you need to. The problem will be getting it to stay in the right place. So I'm gonna use some temporary adhesive on the back and stick it down to my, hopefully that stays, because this is a piece of silicone I have in the bottom. But this way I can line it up. Like 
like so. <sighs> See, this is why. This is scary. <laughs> see how it works. I have too much stuff on my desk. Maybe I didn't have to worry about it. Well, it's coming up anyway, so I'm only getting one stamp on this. That's okay. It worked out okay. So you see how there's this line here? That's because there's an imperfection in my stamp. So I'll have to have Alt new. Send me a new one. But we will hide it. So at this point, I might go this way with it. And you could do something just that simple and put a little sentiment strip on there and call it good. So you could do that or you can maybe move this off and trim and kind of fill in a whole bunch, but let's do it. Let's do it this way. And that. And let's grab a sentiment. You could do, I hope you feel better soon. You know, I could do any of those. Good. Okay, I need a piece of paper. Right. I'm on a roll. <laughs> you guys make me think really hard. Doing this stuff on the fly is um, not easy. But it makes me more creative, so I don't mind. Okay. Do -do -do. One other thing you could do for this, if you, okay, so I'm going to put this down and you could do this. Yeah. And that would be super clean and simple. Um, another option would be to add a watercolor panel behind it. So if you wanted to make it more complex, right, you could do that. Um, so I did pull up some watercolor. So I could do like a watercolor wash behind it. And that would be really cool. You could do something like, that, that's kind of cool. Any favorites yet? I'll do a wash and then you can tell me if you want me to do it on the wash. I think this is kind of neat. Um, what color, what color, what color? I'll do orange.
And I need a bigger brush. Okay, so this is an idea. I like this one better than the plain white one. Well, the star background is available tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to heat this up so I can get this dried. I wouldn't have thought of the star background either, except that I had it out. But it's just another, like, you've got, this could look more like a star burst, right? So I guess that's how my brain was going. Okay, so there's that option, right? So we said this was, this is a good one. I like this one a lot. Or we could see I like it better with something behind it besides just white but that's just me so I like the way that looks too and this could even use a little spatter or how does it look if we put it all together I think this one, this one out of all of them, I think is definitely more my style with the color and everything in it. I would, so I am going to do that, but I'm going to add in another layer of this to get me, um, so that way you know it's like watercolor. So basically what I did is I added more of the same color. So this is warm sunshine, but my brush is a little dry. So I'm going to get some dry marks here. And then when I um, put it all together, you'll see those marks underneath. And so that it'll really look like watercolor. Okay, so I know I'm not using um, regular glue right now, like I normally would. Actually using temporary adhesive, maybe, if this will work. There we go. Okay, so there's a little method to my madness. I was just thinking about like wanting to share this on like Instagram. And I think what I wanna do is take pictures of all the different versions we talked about and then share them all out there. So you can, you'll have like a whole bunch of different ideas, right? So there's that. So I can pull them apart and then um, 
and take pictures. But I think this one is definitely my favorite. All right, so that looks really awesome. So I can see in here, here I'll bring you, I'll bring you top side. So you can see like there's some white around the edges here and then there's some spots that are, oh, here you go, right there. So you can see like there's some darker yellow and some lighter yellow. So it looks watercolored in the background, not just yellow. Otherwise you could just put a piece of yellow cardstock back there. All right, so, and you can even see it here, it's darker kind of towards the center. Yeah, yeah. So then that. No, that already had temporary adhesive on it. So we'll cover up my little defect. There. I love it. Um, my Instagram is um, Pixel Mavens Retreat, all one word, no apostrophe. There you go. That looks awesome. I have a whole bunch of other cards, like the ones from last week, that I still need to share out there. Definitely want to do that so you guys can. Um, you can click on the little flag on any post and it'll save it into your saved items. And that's a nice way to grab inspiration if you need it. So I really like that. Yay. Okay. So one, another one that I really had in mind, which is why I have these out. So these are the, um, the metallics. Okay. So we're not going to use these. That's fine. I have navy blue and I have black. And I was really thinking that like a tall and skinny card would be really awesome. Um, so I showed this technique on, um, on the Alta New Live on Monday. I don't know what colors I'm gonna do. some gold and I really really love it and it kind of came to me when I was thinking of different things that I could that we could explore that this would be a really good technique for this stamp set okay so I'm gonna do the big ring and it's not all going to fit on here that's okay. I'm just going to stamp this part of it anyway on here, like so or whatever. So I'm not too concerned about the, the hanging off on the side there. Okay, so basically, I don't know what color to use. Any, any color preferences? I'll wait here a second while you guys are... Let me know. Do you want to do um, purple, blue, gold? We'll do a whole bunch of colors, but what color do you want this one to be? There's a delay. I have something I'm going to try um, next time to see if I can get rid of the delay altogether. But I only wanted to test out one thing at a time. So this time we're working on higher resolution and it seems to be working. Okay, purple. She wins. Okay, so I'm going to paint the purple right onto the stamp.
And if you don't know, these are the alternative metallic watercolors. So this will have a metallic to it. So I'm going to stamp this right on. Purple and gold, aqua. Ha ha. So there you go. That looks really, really cool. Okay, so we'll do a couple other ones and then I'll show you the close up. So this little guy here, let's do him. Yes, um, on Facebook, my delay is only about eight seconds, so it's not bad. The delay here is almost like 20 seconds. It's really crummy. So next time I'm going to try something different with my feed set up here, and hopefully it's going to cut out the delay altogether. Um, okay, so we're going to do aqua. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so originally I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. So go Browns. <laughs> um, this is really kind of cool, the way this is working. And I can do, let's do this gold. Yes, 20 seconds is super, super long. I don't know if I like where this is going yet, but we'll see. I'm so back into this one and I will do this. Oops. Let's see. I don't know if I want to do the same gold or not. Okay, so it doesn't have the same ring to it because the browns haven't been great since the 1990s. <laughs> At least the Vikings have had a fighting chance like the past couple years. So what else can I do? Oh, um, so I do have, what did I do with the stamp? It's missing. Got that one. No, no, no. Oh, huh, it's in my stamp positioner. Spatters, yes. Okay, good idea. Um, okay, so remember, this is the one that's got the funky edge on it. I think it needs like 
mostly gold and just a few little pops of color. So I'm trying to do, I think, more gold. And I don't know if it's a good idea to change up golds or to stick with the same one. So I'm going to just stick with the same one. But if you don't have the metallics, of course, you could do this on white with just regular watercolors. That looks awesome. I'm actually, now that I have that cleaned off, let's do it again. And you can see like right here is where that defect is in the stamp, but it doesn't matter so much because it's, um, cause it's all modeled anyway. Yes, it is kind of celestial. I like it. All right, so let's do one. I'm gonna do this small one here. And let's do it in white. Of course, the one color that I didn't put any water in. I said, oh, I'm not gonna use that one, no. That didn't work out too well. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna let that one soak up a little bit more and we'll try it again. I wasn't very happy with that. All right, so it's 5.30. And I guess this is about the time when I start asking if you have any other requests for next week. And if you have any other questions that you want to throw my way so we can start kind of wrapping up. Because I can't believe it's 5.30 already. Oh, there we go. I think I just didn't have enough on this one. So right now I'm thinking if I just leave it sit here for a second, um, it will soak into the paper and maybe we'll get a better, yes. Still not really what I was looking for, but we'll do that. So we're gonna do some spatters. Mm. All right, so I did this on just plain black cardstock. And you can see that the watercolors work pretty well on it. You don't have to have special black cardstock for this or black uh, watercolor paper. Okay, so I'm gonna flip up so you can, you can see what it looks like. That looks pretty cool. It gets lots of shimmer. Super shimmer. Yeah, I like it. All right. So, you know, I don't know which way it will go on a card base. Again, a sentiment strip is just a simple thing you can add to this. Um, because I have them out, it's kind of easy to do, yes. Do, oh, let's do a multi, let's do a multi sentiment. Okay. Um, 
so let's say many congrats to you. Um, I'm here for you. You're amazing. No, no, I'm not here for you. I'm so proud of you. That's what I was thinking of. Stamina, I'm going to go check another stamp set that I have. I changed my mind, kind of. So these are some new sentiments from Sentiment Strips 2 coming out tomorrow by Alta New. Um, so we're gonna combine some of these. So let's, I'm um, stamp them out and then we'll decide which ones we wanna use. Okay, so. Now that I see that on there, I think I don't want white. I want. I know I have just the right color. So this color is um, Mermaid by Lawn Fawn. You see, it's not white, it's blue. So it kind of matches this teal in here. Okay. All right, so I have Let's Celebrate. And that was a new one. And this one is, oops. Okay, I really like sentiment strips, but sometimes they're a real pain, right? And congratulations. And this one, I like this one. I knew you could do it, that one. These three are all from Sentiment Strips 2. Quick cards for the neighborhood in honor of quarantined May Day. I love it. Uh, okay, yeah. Cards and I'm going to redo the Let's Celebrate one because I think it could look better. I cut that paper funny. Uh... You're amazing. And so proud of you. That'll work. Okay, so those are all the sentiments I'm gonna use. And I need a card base for this so we can so we can like finish finish it. So this is um three and a half by seven. 
and I think I want a little border around it. So I'm going to cut this down and then I'm going to get a piece of base for this. Okay, so I just trimmed that down. So there's a, this is now three and a quarter by six and three quarters. So there's that. And there's that. Okay, so I have to ask, did you guys just hear anything weird like water rushing by in the video? I mean, I'll check it out later for sure. But I've been thinking that I need to get some sound barrier from upstairs because that's the bathroom. <laughs> I like the way that looks. So my thought with these is to do something like this. So I'll cut that off when I get that in place. So like a four little strip deal like that. Oh, good. <laughs> a truck? No, a toilet. <laughs> uh, I'll have to listen back and see. Whoa, no. All right, so this card is kind of cool because you could use it for a lot of different things, right? So perhaps a graduation card or, you know, anything that, you know, someone has overcome the odds and done something truly astounding or, you know, whatever. Um, perhaps they've even overcome illness. They were a COVID-19 patient and now they're A-OK, -okay, right? So you could send this to them. Yeah, I love it. Funky. So really cool idea for what you can do with the, um, with the spheres and spirals. Sweet. Awesome guys. Cool. So next time we're thinking quick cards for the neighborhood in honor of May Day. 
I will have to, okay, so May Day is not something I ever celebrated growing up, but when we moved here to Nebraska, neighbors had told us about it. I don't know that people really do it here a whole lot anymore, but maybe we will this year because, you know, everyone's holed up at home. So I think that sounds like a great idea. So I will come up with some simple cards. Happy spring or um, just some good festive uh, quotes and such. So I'll come up with some good stuff. And we will do, that will be a tic-tac-toe challenge week. So I'll have a tic-tac-toe challenge card. Oh, and I love it. I've already finished it and it's gorgeous. You're going to, you're going to like it a lot too. So it's, it's really, it's, um, Honestly, it's something that you could do for May Day, but it's really complex. So maybe I'll take that idea and make it more simple and we can use it for that. So if you guys have any particular stamp sets that you're interested in having me use, go ahead and leave a comment or you know pop it into the comments on the video later this week. I probably will be working on ideas over the weekend, so. Very cool. All right, guys. So remember, tomorrow is a huge day on my blog. I've got three things going on. Um, of course, Festive Friday will be up. And there are two blog hops going on. A new Ulta new release will be happening tomorrow. And it's their uh, monthly stamp and die release. And then also the um, hashtag um, spread joy not germs blog hop, which if you didn't catch it at the beginning, is going to be 145 blogs long. So it's ginormous. And there are 30 sponsors with 50 prizes. So all you have to do is leave comments wherever you feel compelled to do so. And that will enter you into the drawing for all the prizes. So anyway, big day tomorrow on the blog. And I'm so glad you guys stopped by today. I have so much fun crafting with you. So Thanks for being here, and um, next time we'll try out something and see if I can get this lag to get shorter, and we'll go from there. So thanks so much, guys. Have a great week and a great weekend. I hope you have some time to craft, and if you do, um, be sure to um, use my little at symbol to, um, uh, to tag me, so that way I can find it and, and leave comments and love for you. So I'm out on... Facebook, but mostly I'm out on Instagram and here on, on YouTube. So if you're out on Instagram, just snap a pic and put it on your profile and um, tag me at Pixel Mavens Retreat. And I would love to find your stuff. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much and have a good night. Bye.